being broken into and not having the retribution that you'd like. But you can't control that, right? All you can do, if you hold on to this energy and think that things didn't go a certain way, it's just, you're just going to carry that around with you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, all you have to do is kind of like, look, I have my health. Fuck, it sucks, but there's good things to look forward to in the future. Yep. Right? <laughs> you're just biting your tongue right now, aren't you? Yep. Um, when you have realistic expectations, your attitude going into situations will be more positive and bring a more positive result. So we need to stop trying to do everything perfectly and just be proud of ourselves because we did it. That's what you're saying, right? So mm. the baby steps, um, instead of looking at the negative perspective as to what we fucked up, look at, okay, well, what did we accomplish? For example, this isn't going to be a perfect night for us. We're running behind schedule. We're late. But we're still doing it. We're still trying to reach people and say, look, um, there's always going to be things to let you down in life. But as long as you focus on the little baby accomplishments and be proud of yourself. For example, if you have an anxiety attack or you're having panic attacks and it's tough for you to go to the grocery store, lineups bother you, for instance, um, maybe you're not going to be able to fill your cart and get a full thing of groceries tonight. But if you even go there and just pick up a new thing, like a thing of milk or something like that, and then you go home, that's a baby step. So that's something to be proud of. Or if driving is something that creates panic in your life, if you can get out and drive around the block, you don't have to drive to Toronto. You don't have to drive uh, two hours from one city to another, as long as you do a little bit at a time. Do something. Right, and reward yourself for the, the small things that you do get through. Um, we choose our attitude towards the situ situation around us. Um, we may not be able to control the situation, but we can always choose how we will react and respond and how we're gonna feel inside as long as we have our health, um, as we said. When you have realistic expectations, your attitude going into situations will be more positive and bring a more positive result. Uh, we need to stop trying to do everything perfectly and just be proud of ourselves because we did it. It's a lot easier to take risks when we don't expect so much from ourselves. So that's a big thing too. I mean, if you're gonna, like when you're going into the bodybuilding shows, um, when you, if you think about, like if you were, say, Polly's size. Sorry, Polly, we're not going to pick on you. But if you're thinking about trying to become an <laughs> IFBB, yeah, yeah, okay. But at Polly's size, if you're trying to become an IFBB pro, right? It's that's a huge goal from where like you are now. It's not as it's not as big of a goal for you to get there for, as it would be for him, right? So right. Thinking about that could be overwhelming for someone like Polly. Right. So for you, it's not quite as big of an ordeal to to think that's more of a realistic goal. You put the time and you put the work in. Because I am an IFBB pro. Well, you are an IFBB pro, but I'm just saying, if yeah, yeah. you were, yeah, working towards it, right? You'd have to set up goals, yeah. Like yeah. Yearly, monthly, every six months. Every six How long do you think it would take Polly to get to two <laughs> years? Just like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> ten years. Ten years. Polly, ten years, you're going to be just like Scott. Same size and everything. Think that's possible? Probably not. Uh, right? It's possible. Yeah? Yeah. Um... If our expectations are too high, we might not even go after what it is we really want. So um, that's a really powerful expectation because uh, if we start thinking about things um, too much, then we're not even going to try. Like you can get in your head and I can think about a promotion that I want in a job, for instance, and I can start thinking about all the things that I have to do to get there. Like for example, your, your job interview coming up, if you start thinking about um, everything 10 steps ahead of time, you might not have even gone to the interview. You might have been like, oh fuck, it's too stressful just thinking about it. Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. So you, so you're- I started making plans as if I had already had the job. You did, eh? Yeah. See, that, that, that could be- What's gonna happen, what am I gonna do? And that could be setting yourself up too though, yeah, right? I know. Yeah, Be careful. But the good thing is, is that you can reward yourself for the fact that you went to the interview. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, so we usually have this long list of shoulds. Let's get into the should list because the should list is a big one. Okay. So what are some of the things that, uh, that you feel that you should do? Like right now, what is your should list? Like I know for me, I should eat better. I should uh, work out a little more frequently. Like these are some of the things um, I should uh, get my fucking equipment checked for the podcast. These are things that I should do. Do it. Yeah. Right, yeah. Well, this is it works and then it doesn't work, right? It's technology. So, what are some of your shoulds right now? Um, mine are I should eat better. Should eat better, <laughs> yeah. Should eat better, yeah. yeah. Is yours get back to the gym? Right. So we got very similar shoulds right now. Who you? Yeah, that's hilarious. Just the um, candy. What are some of the shoulds that uh, that someone else has maybe conditioned you over the years 
So for example, um, I feel like when I get out of bed in the morning, I should make my bed. That's my mom's shit. That's not my shit. Like, I don't really care if my bed's made or not. I, yeah. I do it, but it was a conditioning. Do you have any, condi- like, shits that were placed on you? Uh, yeah, that one was. Yeah? Yeah. And you have to make your bed before you left the room. Yeah, and I understand it's kind of like setting the tone for the day. That could be, yeah, that could be a positive thing. But if you're running behind, it's not a life or death situation, right? No. Not, so, no. so this is not an expectation. It's really something that's mandatory in life for survival. Yeah. But do you have any more of those shits that uh, are on a list that you can think of from other people? Not off the top of my head. No. So you and I, I have the same cleanliness. Cleanliness, <laughs> yeah. Wear clean underwear when you leave the house, <laughs> you know, just in case. Sure. Yeah, I always wear clean underwear for the most part. Yeah. Are you okay. recycling underwear? No. Okay, I hope not. Um, so some examples of other people's shits. <laughs> I should make more money. I should lose weight. We had that one on there. I should be a better mother or father. I should be a better wife or husband. I should work harder. Uh, and we need to, this is a pretty cool one. Stop shitting on yourself. <laughs> stop shitting on yourself and stop shitting on other people. So the shit list needs to go. I mean, not go completely because there's things that you definitely should do. I mean, for yeah. our health, we talk about health. If you feel you should lose weight and you feel you should eat better and I feel I should do the same, that's about our health. It's, it's about yeah. longevity of life. So that's something that maybe we should be doing. So yeah. that's uh, important to have on the list. But certain things like I should make more money. Well, why? Why should you make more money? Why are you after? The, yeah, are you going to give a ton of it to charity and change the world? Are you going to yeah. feed the right? What do you need the money for? Um, is it just so that you can buy a new car? That's not necessarily uh, a, a life or death situation. That's an ego situation, right? Which yeah. is not the purpose of this program, really. But um, who well, says that you should awesome. do all these things, right? Yeah. So should lists are a big one. What we need to do is make a list of all of our shoulds and start crossing off the ones that aren't ours. Some of these shoulds might be valid, maybe they're realistic, and what we want to do uh, then is to turn them into realistic goals. So these are things we really would like to accomplish. Things we want to change about ourselves and goals that we want to set. As long as these are expectations that we have for ourselves and not someone else's expectations for us, so we want to ask ourselves whose should is that? So for example, ours was our parents' should. Mm-hmm. Or I remember one time when we were having a podcast and we were talking, um, you were kind of feeling like uh, at school, school wasn't really something that you excelled at, right? So no, I, didn't like I it. should be better in school. That might not have been your should. That might have been something that was placed on you by your family at one point in time. Yeah. And mine as well. Yeah. Like I always thought it was always getting straight A marks and I, I should be getting straight A's. That wasn't my should. That was you know a should that was placed on me by expectations for my family. Um, and, and those are the things you want to cross off your list. You want to be true to yourself. So um, part of eliminating these expectations that other people put on us is learning how to be assertive enough and self-confident enough to say, you know what, I love you, but this isn't for me. This isn't something that I want. This isn't a goal that I have for myself. So for an example of that would be if you have, if you're in a relationship and Someone wants you to uh, exactly make more money. Maybe that's not if your partner's trying to force you to do something that you don't want to do. That's not your shit. That's their shit. And if it's not something that you want, then you need to explain that to them. I love you, but I don't want that, and cross it off your list. What can I do tomorrow to bring this a little closer to my life and make it a reality? That's what you want to ask uh, yourself. You want to, um, if it's a real goal that you need to accomplish, you want to bring it close and you want to try to make it real. So stop uh, putting it out there so far that it doesn't even that you don't even bother going after it. And that's what we were talking about when you start thinking about uh, all the potential and you don't even chase yeah. after it, right? You think yeah. ninety steps ahead and you stop going after what it is that you really want. That by that you're so tired in your mind at that point that you're not even going to get up the door, get mm-hmm. up the door. So um, it's never too late. You're never too old. You're never uneducated enough or anything like that. It's all in our heads. It's what we believe about ourselves. So this is an evaluation process for ourselves. Maybe you do need to spend more time with your kids or your spouse. If that's the case, That uh, what can you put off? What can you delegate? So, I mean, I, I don't feel like I need to spend more time with my family. I feel like I spend enough time with them. Do you feel like there's anything in your life that you need to be doing more of that's your own should? Or are you doing a pretty good job all around? Well, I probably should spend more time with my family. Yeah. Is that something that with you... my parents, probably. Yeah? 
I think I, I think I do a pretty good job of, of that. I might I should maybe spend more time with my grandparent, the one that I have left actually. Left. What's that? You only left. I got one. Um, but if you have things like that that you need to do, uh, what what can you delegate? What can you put? What can you put off? What can you have others, someone else do? There are priorities, right? Um, what you really need to do is sit down and figure out what's important in your life and where your priorities are. That's where your expectations should lie. Then we need to figure out a way to get to our priorities and to make them happen. So we need to start now. So there's no such thing as failure. What did you feel when she told us that there's no such thing as failure? Have you ever felt failure before? Yeah. What did it? What was it that, that made you feel like you were a failure? Uh, it was the first time I went out to do the nationals. Yeah. As a, um, like well, bodybuilding, it was out uh, Edmonton or Calgary, one of the first ones, and like I was in great shape. I just won the Ontario. Just won the Ontario's. Yeah. Heavyweights and overalls and great conditioning. And it was 12 weeks later, I went out. And we all got walked on stage. And this was before they broke down to super heavyweights and heavyweights. It was just all one class. So it was huge. And I was like here on the end. And it didn't even get looked at. Didn't even get called out. Nothing. Right. And so it was like, in my mind, like, I was just like, what the fuck happened? Right. So you, like, that was everything, like, I just felt like I didn't do anything right, like a huge letdown. Yeah. So did you it's a failure, right? What could you no matter what I did and what I effort, like I was bang on with my dieting, training, everything. So there's it's nothing you could have done? You did everything no. right pretty much. So I felt like a failure. I felt like it doesn't matter what I do, I'm always gonna fail. So, so that was something that was out of your control, right? Mm -hmm. So if you could go back in time, what would you tell that version of yourself? I don't know, break the guy's legs in the parking lot or something? <laughs> Scott's in rare form tonight. Um, well, what would you, like, what lessons could you have taken from that? You could have taken some lessons away from that, right? I mean, um, the accomplishment you did, you did everything right that you could have possibly done. The judges, obviously, uh, that was it. Yeah, that was everybody's jackass tonight. Um, the judges, obviously, they were in, uh, they had the control of your, your whole show, yeah. right? So you did everything right. What could you have done to change the way that you felt as, as a failure, though? What could you have told yourself? You tried your best, right? Yeah. So that's it. So, I mean, as long as you're trying your best, some things, this is an example of... You that can, was a defining moment in my like, career and my life, for sure. Yeah? Yep. I remember sitting up... But you didn't give up? Sitting outside the van. Yeah, but a lot of things changed in life after that. What, what do you mean? Like, what? how so? Uh, every time I dive in for a show, like, I end up cheating all the time. Just really? Taking more drugs to stay leaner. Really? Yep. I couldn't be. I couldn't one hundred percent. Like, you know. You. Because my mind, what's the point? I'm just gonna fail and get last place anyways. Really? So yeah. fuck. So you. So you felt like after, after that first initial feeling of failure, you had to do everything, not by the book. Basically, you had to fucking cheat to get the result you needed. Uh. Yep. Huh. Okay, so this is so you, you obviously, I mean, going back, this this is this is something that no, this is this is huge because obviously this is something that happens in that industry, right? People are probably coming up against this time and time again, and if they get a feeling of failing, they're cheating the next time, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's unfortunate. Like this is whose fault do you think that is? Other than the judges, do you think that that's um, who's pushing the industry to go in that direction? I don't know. You don't know? The judges, I guess. The way the judges look at you and... So how... Know, I, I, yeah, it's hard to say. Like, back then there was there was only that show that you get your pro card at. They only had a heavyweights. They didn't have a he super heavyweight class. So now there's... That's different. And there's two or three shows you can get your pro card at, which is good. Right. Hmm. So there's really... This is going to continue. There's no way to... Yeah. yeah it's it's going to continue. Is it going to get worse? Yeah, it can get worse. It can get worse? Yeah. Huh. Okay. So obviously, in the bodybuilding world, bodybuilders are now, as Scott's putting it, 
they felt like they came up against failure based on something that was totally out of their control. And because of that, they're not feeling as though they have to cheat to get the result that they wanted to get looked at by the judges, right? Well, they do more and more and more drugs just to get a leaner look and try to get bigger and bigger. Like they, they don't care about their health. And right. So it's detrimental. Yeah. And it's all because they got second.